It's time for the Rose Chat Podcast, a podcast dedicated to celebrating the world's most beloved flower, the rose. Join award-winning gardeners Chris Van Cleef and Teresa Byington as they chat with rose lovers and experts from around the globe. With each episode, you'll gain valuable knowledge and insights to achieve the rose garden you've always dreamed of. Listen now as we explore the world of roses. Hey friends, Natalie Carmoli, Public Relations Specialist for Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs, is back for one of our favorite chats of the season, New Roses, as well as other new plants for our garden. So hey, Natalie, welcome welcome back. Hi, I'm so happy to be back, thank you. Well, even though I have many roses that I totally love, I get completely over the moon about what's coming next. I'm so glad you're releasing some beautiful new roses. And let's start with the gorgeous reminiscent roses. Oh yeah, let's start. Let's start with those. It's so exciting to be here to talk about new roses all together because I know when we talked last year, I didn't have a lot of new roses I could talk about. I had a lot of things on the horizon and it's finally here. So I'm really excited to be able to bring these new roses to your program today and share them with your listeners. And yes, let's start with reminiscent roses. So this is a new series of roses with a new breeder that we've started working with at Proven Winners Color Choice. And that breeder is called Fino Gino. That's the breeding company. And uh, these reminiscent roses are bred by an all-female breeding team at Fino Gino. This is, uh, they are out of Serbia. They grow uh, plants in Serbia and in the Netherlands. And reminiscent roses are the first roses that we Uh, are bringing here to North America from this breeding team. They have a huge portfolio of gorgeous roses, but we're excited to have these to be able to introduce to uh, garden centers in North America and beginning with uh, reminiscent coral rose. So we have three colors in the reminiscent series. Coral is, gosh, I hate to pick a favorite. It's, you know, it's hard to pick a favorite because they're all beautiful in their own way. But I love reminiscent coral because it has these great big round, probably three inch around sized blooms, uh, very, very uh, tight uh, uh, head and um, lots and lots of petals. So it has almost... uh, um, almost a flat appearance, not quite, Uh, nice and tightly held, nice, great for cuts, um, and a beautiful deep pink, kind of to coral color toward the center. It gets a little bit of a coppery color. These roses are also have a wide hardiness range, USDA zone four to nine. So they're going to be really cold Mm -hmm. tolerant, and they're going to tolerate a good amount of heat as well. This is a mid-sized rose in the Reminiscent series, two to three and a half feet tall, two feet wide. And like all the roses we introduce, it's really a non-negotiable standard for us that they are resistant to powdery mildew and black spots. So we have them go through a lot of testing, seven to 10 years of testing before we'll introduce them to make sure that they're going to be easy to grow as well as looking like a beautiful garden rose. At Proven Winners, we always had shrub roses and they're great in their own way. They're easy to grow. They're great in great swaths and landscapes, super dependable. But this is the first, you know, rose that, dare I say, is reminiscent of an English garden rose. Those great big full blooms, nice to cut and bring inside. Um, and they rebloom like a shrub rose. So you're going to mm-hmm. get uh, a flush of blooms uh, reoccurring all summer long. All right. The second in the series is reminiscent crema rose. And as the name suggests, it's a cream colored rose, not really white. It has that lovely ivory color toward the outside and then transitions to a soft yellow toward the center uh, as it approaches that the yellow stamens in the center of the rose. Just like reminiscent coral, it's a nice full rose, lots and lots of petals, very high petal count, but this bloom is a little looser. So whereas reminiscent coral had a tightly held bloom, 
with a lot of petals. This is a very loose looking bloom, nice and soft. I think it lends well to the soft color of the bloom as well. Mm -hmm. This is the smallest of the three reminiscence that we are introducing this year at just one and a half to three feet tall and two feet wide. So that's a beautiful white, yeah. you know, that white, white, off white color in the garden provides a nice neutral in the garden. And then finally, we have reminiscent pink rose. This has the smallest bloom of the three, but uh, I think it makes up for it in uh, the amount of blooms that it has. It's a heavy bloomer. And the pink of this rose is such a beautiful, soft color. So when you're talking about a light pink, this is truly it, a soft, powdery pink color. These blooms really open to a wide, flat appearance still lots of petals but the center stamens are really easy to see because the rose opens in such a flat way uh, pollinators love that and of course like the other two it's resistant to black spot and powdery mildew and all three are beautifully scented so you know we're used to growing shrub roses that perform well as far as flowers as far as disease resistant but not a lot of them are, are scented we did introduce a scented shrub rose a while back at last but this mm -hmm. is our first real foray into roses that look like your traditional garden rose and bring that full fragrance into the garden as well so we're pretty excited about those I'm excited about them too. And two of them, I actually had an early release and got to try them. And when you talk about the crema and I see the pictures, it just doesn't do it justice. It's such a rich, beautiful little color. And the pink is just a shell pink. It's just so beautiful. And these are just, um, they're excellent garden roses. Uh, so first year they performed very well for a first year plant. And I think they would be very nice in containers, just the just the right size. And I cannot wait to get my hands on the coral. Yeah, and that one it looks it, great. Our growers haven't been able to wait to get their hands on it either. So I, I sometimes have trouble getting them myself, but you know, you'll be first on the list. Absolutely. Because <laughs> you should definitely should have all three in your garden. So pretty. So pretty. <laughs> Okay, now we have another series that's really exciting, the Rise Up series. Yeah, so this is a series that's uh, bred by Chris Warner. He has brought a lot to the Proven Winners Rose line. Uh, we have a lot of roses that are uh, bred by him because he just simply creates roses that are so easy growing, so disease resistant, and really bring everything, uh, have brought everything that we wanted to our rose line. Uh, the only thing that we still could have asked for was fragrance, and that's what this brings. So uh, once again, we're bringing fragrance back into the line to this climbing series we call Rise Up. But actually, we call them mini climbers because they can be grown as a climber. They can be trained on a trellis as you would a climbing rose, but they also can be pruned down uh, just uh, to use as a regular shrub type rose. So however the garden prefer the gardener prefers, you can grow this rose either way. So the first in the series is Rise Up Amberness. And uh, this is a gorgeous uh, yellow rose. I, I, I briefly talked about at last rose uh, in that that it was an apricot colored rose uh, that was scented. And this is kind of a little bit like at last rose, but it lends a little more to the yellow or the orange color. And what I love about Rise Up Amberness, the rose buds in and of themselves, is the petals are thick and they have a very weighty sculpted appearance. So uh, it's a, you know, a multi-petaled rose that is just layers and layers of petals uh, that just gives a very frilly kind of appearance to each rose. It's just a gorgeous plant. It'll get three to five feet tall, two to three feet wide, very hardy down to USDA zone four, up to eight. It's a, a beautiful mini climber. Well, I have to talk about Amberness, you know, because I had that one and I grew it in a container and it was time for our rose show. And I looked around my garden and not a lot would look like it was award winning, except for Amberness covered in beautiful buds and blooms. So I picked them all and off I went to the rose show. 
I put all of those little beautiful blooms and buds in an arrangement and Amberness and I walked away with the queen of arrangements. Yes, I remember <laughs> getting that picture. It was so beautiful with that blue ribbon sitting next to it. Oh, um, and uh, it just goes to show these are great for cuts. Yeah, so uh, you know, that's something that the series brings back as in, you know, that brings into our line of roses as well as the, the ability to cut them and bring them inside. Very nice. This is a great one. Yeah. I, another rose, which I know you have a little experience with, is Rise Up Lilac Days. Now, this is the tallest of our three roses in the Rise Up series that we're introducing this year. Uh, and this will get to be five to eight feet tall and two to four feet wide. Uh, Rise Up Lilac Days, I think, maybe is the most highly scented of the three. They all have a beautiful scent, but this one is extremely fragrant. And the roses, uh, there's many roses per stem. So lots and lots of roses per stem, and they are a lilac blue color. So not blue like a hydrangea, but that horticultural blue uh, that we love in roses, um, that lavender color. Um, and when I said lots of roses per stem, I mean it. We had this trialing. Uh, we send our roses <laughs> to a lot of different trials, and we have a lot of people uh, that trial them in different locations. And I got a message back with a photograph of someone holding a stem of Rise Up Lilac Days. And the only thing he wrote underneath it was, this is insane because it had so many roses on it. And that's what we like to hear is that people are just getting an insane amount of roses. When insane is good when like it this. comes to rose blooms, for <laughs> yeah. sure. We like that a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the color is really beautiful. And the way I use this rose, I had it in a container uh, on my potting shed uh, porch, and I had a five foot obelisk uh, that it grew on. And it just grew on it so prettily. It was just easy to train, it was soft enough. Um, so many pretty blooms. And that you mentioned, I think, the, that when it opens, there's a little yellow center. The pollinators loved it. Fragrance, it just was very pretty. I, I was very happy with it. I saw that picture that you sent, you sent that to me and I thought, my gosh, it looks like I've just stepped into an English garden. It looked so beautiful uh, growing up on that obelisk. I loved it. Yeah. Good, good, right. good. Yes. So the third in this series that we're introducing this year, and it's not the only one we have in the series, but is the third that you'll be able to find at a garden center this year is uh, not only part of our Rise Up series, but also part of our Ringo series of roses. Mm -hmm still bred by Chris Warner. Um, he bred the whole Ringo series. So if you go back a couple of years, we introduced Ringo Rose. It's a single petal rose, uh, bright yellow color with that red Halthemia hybrid rose eye. And uh, it, uh, the interesting thing about these uh, Ringo series of roses is they open, the buds start out a deep yellow color and then they open to a lighter yellow. And then as they transition through their life cycle, they tend to turn another color. In the instance of Ringo, it turns a white color with a pink eye. Um, and uh, then we had Ringo All-Star. It's a peachy colored rose, turns a lavender color with a red eye. And now we have Rise Up Ringo, which is back to that bright, red, uh, bright yellow Ringo color with a red eye, but it is a double golden yellow flower. Lots and lots of petals. It is a climber, three to five feet tall, two to three feet wide, still super hardy. Like that entire series down to USDA zone four, these guys are bulletproof, um, but it's a great climber. Um, and if you liked Ringo, but you really like a double rose, this is a great one to choose. It's got that same color, but that double rose appearance. It's Rise Up Ringo. I love the yellow, but I've got to tell you that Ringo gets a ton of attention in my garden when I have visitors. It's it's a, a good sized shrub and it's just covered. When it's in bloom, it's just covered. And you will see the variation of color. So it definitely gets attention. It's a beauty. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I have it in my garden too. And that guy just blooms 
until frost. I had it still making buds after the first frost this year. It just would not give up. <laughs> so it's a super hardy rose, easy to grow. Um, so even though that's the end of what we have in our uh, Rise Up series, it's not the end of our Ringo series. We have another new rose in the Ringo series, and that is Ringo Double Pink. And that is also a Chris Warner rose. It is still super hardy, USDA zone four to eight, two to three feet tall and wide. So this is a rounded shrub. And what's different about this one is it's a semi-double flower. Like the other Ringo roses, the buds start out a deep pink color, open to a soft pink that gets to be a lighter and lighter pink as the blooms transition through their life cycle with that deep red eye. So this is Ringo Double Pink, a really beautiful addition to an already, I think, really fantastic series of roses. So now let's move to some of our companions. All right. Hey, you know what I do have before we move on? There is one more member of the Rise Up series coming. Do you want to hear about it? Oh, coming this year and next year. It's coming next year. Oh, but it's so exciting. I want to talk about it a little bit. Oh, and let's do. It's, let's do. it really connects to uh, the, the Reminiscent series because it's the same breeders as Reminiscent. Oh, nice. So this is uh, from the Phenogeno breeding program and uh, it's Rise Up Ember Rays, E-M-B-E-R-A-Y-S, appropriately called because these roses are a flaming orange color with a yellow center. Oh, nice. uh, they are, you talk about head turners in the garden. They are very bright, unique color, not, I wouldn't say a gaudy orange color though. They're a very deep flaming orange color. Um, it's going to get to be three to five feet tall, two to three feet wide. And um, it's hardiness zone is a five to eight. So a little bit different than the other ones that go down to a zone four, but still plenty hardy down to USDA zone five. And it's just worth talking about because it's such a beautiful rose. It's going to be a fun addition to the series. If people are really, really dying to find it, you might be able, although you might not quite be able to get it in your garden center yet, you might be able to find it online on provenwinners.com. Um, oh, that's nice. That's mid nice. I'm looking at the picture. It is beautiful. Very mm -hmm. bright, vibrant, pretty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nice. It's a unique color, I think. Okay, now let's talk about a few of the new shrubs coming out. Okay. Um, I want to, of course, talk about hydrangeas because, you know, we're pretty pop. We're pretty famous for hydrangeas. We're yes. the breeders of limelight. But before we do that, I also want to talk about another plant that we have uh, done very well with, and that's Wygela. And, uh, you know, Proven Winners is the breeder of wine and roses Wygela, one of the best selling Wygelas on the market. And so we're, we kind of, you know, have a lot of fun with this plant. Uh, and, and what is, I think, really fun about it is it provides a really unique foliage interest to the garden. So it makes it a great companion plant to roses because, uh, you know, it carries the season through with different color foliage than the roses have. Plus you get that early bloom, that spring yeah, most of the time it's a pink bloom on Wygela, uh, that's trumpet shape, the pollinators love it. But um, the two I'm gonna talk to you about right now are really interesting for their foliage uh, specifically. And the first is called Midnight Sun. This is a pretty tiny, tidy sized Wygela at just one to one and a half feet tall and wide. Oh, nice. um, but the foliage is a copper colored. So if you like um, coleus, this is similarly colored to a lot of coleus. Now I'm crazy about coleus and I'm always gonna put it in my garden no matter what. But if you wanna add that coppery color to your garden and have it be something that you don't have to replant every year, this is a way to go. Mm -hmm. This little guy could tuck like in the front row in front of your taller roses. It likes full sun, it's deer resistant. So it's going to uh, not attract any deer toward it. And it just has that blazing orange and red summer through autumn foliage, beautiful front of the border plant with those pink spring flowers. And that is called Midnight Sun Wajula. 
I've never had my Weigelic uh, bloom that it didn't bring in the hummingbirds. Love yeah. it for that reason. You know, I would have it in my garden for that reason alone. It just the hummingbirds seem to love it. They love those trumpet shaped flowers like that. You know, it's, yeah, it's definitely worth bringing some Weigela into your yard. And so I want to talk about another Weigela that has interesting foliage. And this one's called Vigno Verde. If you're familiar with my Monet Weigela, my Monet was really interesting because it has mm -hmm. a variegated foliage that's green with a cream margin. This is opposite of that. It has a bright green center with a black margin. Whoa. Very unique for a Wajila. Very striking. It's mm -hmm. a medium-sized plant, three to five feet, hardy down to zone five, also deer resistant, also has a pink spring flower, so it'll still bring those hummingbirds in, but it carries that season through with that really interesting and unique green, and it's a very bright green, almost a chartreuse green with black margins on that foliage. And I that, think this one's, it, this is such a popular color combination right now. This is just really, really, it's going to set off a lot of plants in the garden. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. I think it's just a lovely um, plant. Um, like some variegated plants, I don't know if, if people grow variegated plants, you know a lot. Every now and then you'll see something there that's a, a reversion. And that means you'll get a stem that grows that's not variegated. Anytime you have a plant that's variegated, and you see something like that happen, just trim it all the way down to the to the base. Mm. Trim that variegation but, out. Um, but this one is interesting. When it does revert, instead of reverting to plain green, it reverts to black. <laughs> so um, at least when it does revert, it goes back to that kind of um, deep black foliage that we're well known for with the wine and roses and the spilled wine. Um, so still, it, you know, so it doesn't overgrow the plant like a lot of green foliage might do when, when it reverts. Really so, pretty. Yeah, Good was, I love this one. All righty. Um, let's, I have some other companion plants, but I don't want to run out of time um, for our hydrangeas. So let's talk about hydrangeas. And if we have time, we can go back to some other interesting companions. How's that sound? That sounds great. Okay. So the first hydrangea I want to talk about is um, Let's Dance Sky View. So this is a new reblooming hydrangea that we're introducing this year. And it's part of a new breeding program that we just started introducing hydrangeas through. And what it does is it is a hybrid of a big leaf hydrangea and a mountain hydrangea. So for those who aren't quite as familiar with growing hydrangeas, a mountain hydrangea, they both originate in Japan. A mountain hydrangea originates in the mountainous areas of Japan, always a lace cap, um, but super bud hardy because it's in that, it originates in that colder mountainous region of mm. Japan. Whereas a big leaf hydrangea is a hydrangea that a lot of people are familiar with. It's a, it, it both can turn blue to pink depending on your soil, but they have the mop head appearance that so many people love. Um, but they don't tend to be quite as bud hardy as a mountain hydrangea. So a lot of people get really frustrated because they lose their early summer blooms because they either get frosted or they get trimmed wrong or a deer nibbles them off. Well, what we've done is we've combined the best of both worlds with these new hybrid hydrangeas. So Let's Dance Skyview is a Macrophylla serrata hybrid. It looks like a, like a mop head hydrangea, like a big leaf hydrangea but it behaves like a mountain hydrangea in that it's super bud hardy all the way down to USDA zone four. Mm. And uh, sky view is really unique because it's very easy to turn blue. So I don't know for those of us like me that live in really alkaline soil, <laughs> having something that's easy to turn blue. I, I am not in Cape Cod. Everything's <laughs> blue there, but here oh, everything's no. pink, right? Yeah. So, oh yeah, we're pink here. We're pink mm -hmm. here too. So having something where I don't have to work quite as hard to turn it blue, that's a winner for me. So uh, this one will bloom with, uh, it when it first, when the blooms first start to open, they'll have like a, a green eye in each floret with just a blush of color around the outside. And then as the blooms mature, they'll turn a full 
if you've treated the soil a full sky blue color. Honestly, if you don't treat the soil, they turn a beautiful pink color as well with that um, with that creamy colored eye. Just depends on what you like. But if you do like a blue bloom, this one's going to make you not work quite as hard to get it there. Um, it's a tidy size, two to three feet um, tall, two to four feet wide. So it'll grow a little wider than it does tall. And it's just a lovely new addition to the Let's Dance Reblooming Hydrangea series. Oh, that just sounds really, really good. I love the size. I love the ease of changing the color. Mm -hmm. um, there can just never be too many hydrangeas. That's honest. right. And <laughs> there can never be too many hydrangeas that aren't frustrating to grow, right? And that's what we've really been working at. Not only, you know, it's always been a non-negotiable that they have strong stems, that the, that the flowers will stay upright on the plant and give you, you know, you're not going to look at a plant where they're all laying on the ground. But recently, we've really worked hard at making sure the rebloomers actually rebloom. So yeah. for those of us that live in a cooler climate, that second bloom on these on the older convention, more conventional rebloomers that first came out, that second bloom can take forever to show up. So if you've lost your first bloom to an early frost or some other malady, you're waiting forever to get that second bloom. This one, it's not only going to, are the buds not only going to be a little more hardy, but it's going to rebloom faster so that you're not going to be waiting until October to see those mm -hmm. blooms on new wood. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> we could end there, but there's one that, <laughs> that I want to hear more about, and that is the Kodiak Fresh. So tell us oh, about okay. that one. It looks so good in the picture and I want to hear more about yeah. that. Yeah, I'm excited that you want to hear about Kodiak Fresh. So this is part of our Deer Villa series and this is a native species. Um, it's a native cultivar of Deer Villa. We have, we already had Kodiak Red and Kodiak Orange and Kodiak Black, but this is Kodiak Fresh. It is a chartreuse green foliage plant with a bright, you know, a bright yellow flower that blooms starts blooming in late spring and really will bloom most of the season. Um, nice, tidy habit, two to three feet tall. So it's a little bit smaller than the others in the Kodiak series, uh, but it's super easy care. Once again, brings a unique foliage interest to the mm -hmm. garden. So it has that chartreuse colored foliage. It's also a great cut. It's, it's going to be a really, really full shrub for you. So you're almost going to have to thin it out. So what a great choice when you're, when you're cutting your roses, so you're cutting your hydrangeas, having a filler to put in the vase with them is always a great idea. And the Kodiak stems are nice and straight. They make a great filler and a really interesting plant. You can layer it behind things that are not quite as tall. Um, I love Dervilla and they're so easy to grow because they are native species. You know, I'm always looking for shrubs that um, I can cut the foliage because the roses are so complimented by it in vases. So, and hummingbirds, we love to bring them in and this is going to do that. So I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. And then once you get it established, it's really drought tolerant too. So if you have some drier areas of your garden, um, this is going to hold up a little better in those places. Well, I think you mentioned where we could buy them online if we can't find them um, locally, and we hope that we can. But if we can't, I think you said provenwinners.com to take a peek there at what we yes. might be able to find. Yep. And then before I let you go, could you tell us a little bit about the YouTube channel so our listeners who are following YouTube can see many of these plants? Sure. So we have so we have such a talented team here at Proven Winners Color Choice. I can't sing their praises enough. They make so much YouTube content. You could really get such an education just heading over to the Proven Winners of uh, Proven Winners Coloring Choice Color Choice Flowering Shrubs YouTube channel. It's at PW Color Choice. You're going to be able to see our Gardening Simplified Radio Show with Rick Feist and Stacy Hervella. They do a radio show every single week that talks about different kinds of plants. So fascinating. Such smart people and entertaining people. <laughs> a great show. There's 30 second videos that feature different plants. There's how to videos. Christina does a ton of how to videos on there. All kinds of things at that. At PW Color Choice. Anytime you're looking for us, really, if you're looking for us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, 
All you got to look for is PW Color Choice. Perfect. I love to go there. It is all that she said that it was and more. So mm -hmm. a good way in winter, it has been such a delight to have that resource for sure. Well, Natalie, thanks so much for joining me today. It's just such fun to have you and to add to my growing list. <laughs> <laughs> I am always happy to be on your show. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And friends, I hope you heard about some must-haves for your garden, too. And until next time, happy gardening. You've been listening to the Rose Chat Podcast with Chris Van Cleve and Teresa Byington, expert rose gardeners who want to help you achieve the rose garden of your dreams. Don't miss an episode. Listen anytime on our website at rosechatpodcast.com or listen on the go via the Rose Chat app on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Share this podcast with your social networks and join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by using the hashtag RoseChat. Join us next time for another edition of the Rose Chat Podcast. The Rose Chat Podcast is a production of the Rose Chat Media Group, Birmingham, Alabama.